Hey everyone, it's Oprah George and welcome back to Let's Play Ghost Trick. Uh, last time we managed to get here to the Justice Minister's office and it turns out it was the troubled man who we've visited many times and who is one of my favourite characters, especially to voice actually. Uh, and then it turns out he died of a heart attack, so uh, we got him his water and now we have to get his medicine to him. So how are we going to do that? Well, we can use the sword and uh, hopefully we can do something with that. So let's raise this arm and see exactly what we can do. Oh, he's uh, saluting. How, how wonderful. Uh, there's a hanging basket. Uh, we can rock that. We can turn it. Uh, frame hanger. Which has a sword over there. Uh, can I get over there? No. Can I get there from the arm being down? Uh, I can. So I can close this kit and get over to this side. And uh, same thing there. I can swing this sword. And not much happens. I think I remember this being uh, decently convoluted. Uh, let's actually instead do this. Time is indeed passing. Because if I do this, I think this this is going to be wrong, I think. But it's a demonstration of the kind of thing we need to do. So if I rock that, pop, that goes onto the sword. And then we swing the sword again. And it doesn't quite reach. Hmm, that was so close. If the swing just had a little more reach to it, I think I'd better look for something else. Unfortunately, we can't actually do anything at this point. Uh, so if I hit the fate change, uh, we can actually do it right. Please tell me, I was going to say, please tell me we're at least in the fan. There we go. That's not too hard. Now we've got this again, time for the next step, get this medicine bottle, etc, etc. So we have to put something on the sword that's a little bit bigger than that uh, cantaloupe or whatever it is up there. Uh, that can swing round and hit the medicine bottle, basically. So if we go over here, I forget exactly how this works, but I think it works something like this. Uh, wait, no, I think actually first we want to... Go up here. Uh, oh no! Nope, I remember now. Never mind, we do want to stay down here. And we do want to go across. So, in case you hadn't realised it, the objective is to get uh, this globe up here across to the other side. And uh, what's that there? Oh, the frame hanger for that uh, sword. Okay. So here's a globe, we can spin it, and we can turn the stand. Uh, what happens if we spin the globe now? Oh, it pops onto that sword, and that's pretty useless. So, <laughs> this is unfortunately one of the biggest trial and error points in the game. Uh, or at least the biggest so far, because it's one of the ones that I don't remember the exact route. So, uh, good, we're in there. Put over this medicine bottle, and unfortunately, every time we go through this conversation, incidentally, it's a very fragile globe that falls out just from one spin. But anyway, moving right along, uh, get across here. So if I now turn this around, uh, what happens when I undo these? I know I have to undo both of these, and I know I have to do it in a certain order, and I've forgotten what order that is. So if I undo this one first, uh, what happens if I spin the globe now, incidentally? Which way is it, where's it going to go? It's going to knock that over. Oh, I remember now. This, this urn is pretty light. Once an urn is dropped, there's no getting it back. Because I better think about carefully about what I drop and when. Uh, so now I can roll the globe. I don't want to do that yet. I want to go back over the other side. Uh, go up here. Because I've remembered that I think what you want to do is now drop this. 
So now you see, oh here we go, it's a pretty light frame for its size. There sure are a lot of things that can fall down in this room. He's a fallen man, huh? He deserves to have everything come tumbling down on his head. I don't know what fallen man, but I don't know about fallen man, but you talk about him like he's your fool guy. I guess the key here is what order the objects are dropped in. Indeed. Uh, so... It is rather annoying that I have to lower the arm to get to the curtain on this side. The idea is... We're going to launch the globe across. So to do that, of course, we've got to get into the globe. Roll that along. Drop it down. Good. And to launch it across, we're going to have to remove the cantaloupe or whatever it is from that little thing now. Just like the globe, of course, we can uh, turn it around. So now, if we swing that... POW! There goes the globe. That's what we wanted, and now we can launch the medicine bottle, I think. My medicine! Ah! A, I don't think you're supposed to take that much at once, and B, how did that much fit into that tiny little bottle? But anyway, uh, there, the minister finally took his medicine. I think maybe he even took too much medicine. Such a greedy man. Huh? He's supposed to take two capsules with water. Why doesn't he know that? Ah, oh, cut the guy some slack. There, see? He is apparently also the singing chef. Who knew? No, not, not really. I think I just reused the clip, of course. Uh, phew, that was a lot of work. Well, hopefully this taught him a lesson. Huh? He greatly underestimated his dependence on his medicine. I hope he learned something from this experience. First, know yourself. That is the key to everything. I think you need to listen to your own advice. Anyway, let's go back to the world of the present with a living Justice Minister. Huzzah! And so the Justice Minister is now back to life. But the furrows on his brow are even deeper now. Meanwhile, we're stuck on the other side of the room, I think. And apparently our Lady Detective is the present cause of those furrows. Look, Detective. He was sentenced after a fair trial, and the man himself wants to be executed. But there was no evidence. All they had was his own confession. But it was no ordinary confession. It was the confession of an esteemed detective. Stay back! I told you I don't want anybody coming near me. Mr. Minister, please listen to me. I might be able to gather new evidence in that case tonight. What? So please, please, just give me a little more time. I just got a call from the prison. Your death row convict apparently just escaped. <gasps> Unfortunately, after all this time, it seems he now wants to dodge his punishment. But, but... When he's apprehended, his sentence will be carried out. Tonight. No. But when the sentence was handed down, you were against enforcing the death penalty. So why did you sign the order all of a sudden? Well, I... I was simply performing my duty as Justice Minister. That's all there is to it. We are, of course, stuck in a sword. Uh, anyway. Then looks like she's about to rip into the Justice Minister. I think she's forgotten all about me. I think I sent her a little signal. Uh, swing this sword around. Sissel! There you are. It sounds like the minister is being very stubborn. That's right, he is. Maybe we shouldn't have saved him after all. The minister has to have the execution carried out tonight. And he has a very good reason for it. A good reason? I told Lynn about what I learned about the kidnapping. K kidnapping They kidnapped the justice minister's daughter! Apparently. Oh my goodness. Now you're talking to a bloody suit of armour, an empty suit of armour. Not that he's looking at you, because he's got his head in his hands, but still. Uh, but still, 
<laughs> Unintentional. But, uh, oh, I said the same line as her. Honest. That's still no reason to hurry forward with the execution. Why don't you go ahead and say that to the Justice Minister, then? Hmm, the poor man. I hate to do that. Uh, I hate to do that to him. Oh, by the way. Do you think you could carry me? Oh, right, sure. Not very handy, is it, having no legs? So now she's going to approach him with a sword. He wants people to stay back, and now she's approaching him with a sword. What are you going to do with that globe? Crack me in the head with it? Oh, this, uh, <laughs> pay no attention to this. It's kind of hard not to pay attention to it. By the way, and please pardon me if this is a silly question. Were you talking to somebody just now? Oh, so he did notice. He is the first person to notice someone talking to us <laughs> when, when they were just talking to us. But of course not, right? I mean, there's no such thing as ghosts, right? Are you talking about me? Ah! No, there's no such thing. This is a dream. It's nothing but a dream. Don't you remember me? My dream is talking to me. <laughs> so now I'm a dream, eh? Mr. Minister, we know. We know about your daughter. She was kidnapped, wasn't she? Except she wasn't, because we saw the tape recorder, but I, I suppose uh, it's going along with this path, just in case we hadn't seen it. But anyway, uh, and if the execution doesn't take place tonight, you won't see her again. <laughs> ah! Your medicine! Medicine! Ah! Except he doesn't have any left, because he gulped down the whole bottle. <laughs> Oh, what am I going to do? The death row prisoner has escaped. If he isn't executed tonight, my daughter, my Emily. But what if that execution isn't the right thing to do? Yeah. Come on, Lynn. If you keep pressing him like that, he's going to die again. What can I do then? We have to do something about that kidnapping. And to do that, it'll be impossible to get the Minister on our side. That's the way I see it. I think I'll start by gathering info on the kidnapping, in the only way I know how. So, yes, now we are supposed to go to where that kidnapping was and find out it was on a tape recorder. So, let's do that. Even though we already know that. <laughs> Maybe I shouldn't have gone there so early. I really should pay the kidnappers hideout a visit. After all, if we want the Justice Minister to come around, we have to solve this problem first. I feel like I'm slowly moving away from my own mystery, but I'm not the kind of guy who can abandon a little lady in trouble, so I guess I'm in this for a little while longer. Are we going to save? Of course not! Are we going to continue? Of course so! Or something. Chapter 11! The Justice Minister's daughter has been abducted. The kidnappers demand the executioner of the death row prisoner Zhao to be carried out tonight. Lin says the executioner the execution is a mistake, and I believe her. And so I'm paying the kidnappers hide out a visit to see what I can find out about the abduction. What took you so long? Your instinct was right, beauty, my dear. They had that restaurant surrounded. It took me forever to shake them, and now my poor bike is ready for the scrap heap. Next time, maybe you should make it a tricycle so you don't hurt yourself. Ouch, that hurts, beauty, but that's okay. That's what I love about you. Well, that sounds familiar. A lot of this looks familiar, actually. Hint, hint. <laughs> anyway, be a little more gentle with our valuable hostage, please. Yes, yes, always keep a smile on a lady's face, right, my dear? There, see that beauty? Now there's a smile blooming on your face too, my dear. Yes, a wry smile. I'm going out for a breath of fresh air. You're on guard duty. Alright, I'll dream of you until you return. 
Why don't you open the trunk for our guest? I will, beauty. I was just taking a little breather. All right, little lady. Let me open that trunk for you. Or not. Beauty. It looks like the Justice Minister's daughter already has been kidnapped. And something else is bothering me, too. I don't think I've ever been to this room before, but something about it is giving me a strange sense of deja vu. I've seen something like this before. That's what I said! So, okay, that seems like a good place. Oh, no, Thought Bubble. Then we'll stop. <laughs> Taking something precious to manipulate others. So that's what a kidnapping is. That only tricks those without the powers of the dead come up with. However, if I take that precious thing back, their power vanishes, doesn't it? Now then, time to see how the Justice Minister's little girl is doing, before this guy wakes up from his dream of beauty. Okay, now is a good time to uh, to stop. So uh, next time on Let's Play Ghost Trick, we're going to open up that case. And uh, well, as we saw that tape recorder, I don't know if we're expecting the daughter inside or whether uh, I guess that tape recording might have just been because he wasn't there yet. Who knows? Uh, I guess I guess we'll find out next time. Uh, thanks very much for watching, everyone, and bye bye. <laughs>